What's going on guys? So today on this Shoki third party Transformers review, we're going to be taking a look at something new from DX9. But well, sort of new. It's something that's been out for a while, but redone? Anyway, it's their Warren Pocket Legendary Heroes in Your Pocket Dinobots. Now, I have looked at all the Dinobots before, if you want to go check out those. They're in the uh, DX9 slash New Age review set but this is actually a box set so now you could still try to buy them all individually but why not when you could buy the box set but this one is a special box set because it says right there dark dino set so this is like some type of evil dinos i don't or dinobots i should say um i don't believe they're the shattered glass ones they don't really share any of the coloring or designs or anything like that they just look like evil Dinobots, so um, as you'll see, I uh, have put them as Decepticon clones. Either way, so here we do have X, X Tall 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, Bumper, Quaker, Skyer, Thorner, Rager, of course, good old Grimlock. He's a good one. Anyways, so the new group box looks like this, which I might still pick one up. And they even get the side stuff here, so you get slag swooped up their individual box art and you come to the back and you have the box art that's usually on the back of all the individual dinos you get their uh stats you get their stats on the back there plus I, I really do love this versus constructicons thing and also looks very similar to some of the first battles when the dinobots first met the constructicons especially this moment here with slag that kind of happened and then you come over here you get Rager, or well, you got Grimlock, Snarl, and Sludge, and up top you got them all in their dino mode. I love that they put Grimlock as sitting down, waving, which is funny. And on the bottom you get your warnings and whatnot. You got age 15 plus made in China, by the way. Hey, I'm right in the middle of that. And there you go, if you want to go check out some websites. I picked this up from TF Source. That's the only place I've seen it available. Maybe somebody else got it. I don't know. Uh, for an okay price, it's about 150 thereabouts and of course this is a special set so it's different however if you want to get just the regular dinos in the box set it's like 120 which is cheaper than buying them all individually and i think i found out why as we go through this now uh unlike a normal transformers review i'm not going to bother showing transformation and stuff this is going to be a straight comparison review because well we've already done all the transformations on screen so let's go ahead and get them all out here and see how dark these dinos are All right. Well, it's kind of blurry. I don't know if that helped. But here we have the Dark Dino set. And we do have the Grimlock, uh, Swoop, Snarl, or Sludge, Snarl, and Slag. And you can see they're very, very differently colored. And the, the uh, camera doesn't know what to do. There we go. One of these is going to make things better. I don't know. Camera's not sure what to do because of all the purple and black now. You can see what I meant by, like, the uh, kind of shattered glass look. But they're also kind of replicating what Trypticon looks like to some degree. You know, but you can tell they're definitely meant to be evil versions of the Dinobots. So that's why you can see I slapped on some Repro label uh, Decepticon logos. Uh, either the regular cool metallic ones or some of the Universal sets. I kind of ran low by the time I finished the whole thing. But they are awesome. I love the purple the new orange uh, instead of like the yellow or even green in some cases and then even orange paint here on the side and they just look awesome um yeah just they're cool let's just let's just be honest here so i'm gonna go one by one show them off and then compare to their normal versions how about that sound good in the front, of course, you had the Grimlock, which we've sort of already looked at, and I love the new color swaps. You got teal, you got orange down here, still some silver down here. He does come with the same weapons, uh, but of course, all the swords and stuff are molded in translucent orange. All the things that were yellow are generally now uh, silver, and then, well, oddly enough, the arms are probably the same color they were before. Uh, he just looks cool. I mean, and as a version of Grimlock, I digs it. Even the orange visor over the eyes just makes him look... Well, more evil. I don't know what else to say. Sorry, guys. I did forget one quick little feature here, and it is Grimlock's crown. 
Uh, I don't remember which way it goes on his head. <laughs> Generally goes on only the one way, so I think I believe it goes on this way. Ow! And same problem as the original. It is super pointy and hard to put on, but it's got a nice silver crown there, which is cool, but um, still really hard to put on. Um, so yeah, I forgot about that accessory. He has another one, of course, for Dino Mode. We'll see that here in a minute. But here he is in comparison to the normal one. Now I have added some of the uh, G1 toy stickers to this guy, so he's not going to look exactly the same. Also, this version uh, has a crack across the chest that's not supposed to be there. Now, something important to note, and I think it's a major difference here. I think that these had some die cast in them. Either it's a super heavy paint job or this chest is die cast, and it feels thicker and heavier these don't feel anywhere near as heavy through a lot of the parts but uh you can see here where a lot of the changes get made for colors and stuff like that obviously ignore the toes down here but it's just a super evil version and obviously these guys uh lose most of the metallic colors and paints uh, with the exception of the toes these guys are mostly just molded plastic with painted details and stuff so I mean, it's definitely uh, significantly different. And now we'll look at them in uh, dino mode. Okay, so Grimlock dino mode. Looks pretty cool, not gonna lie. Uh, of course, a lot of the details are <laughs> still just visible from the previous thing. But one thing I did is I went with the uh, chest emblem instead of the head emblem like I did on this one. That's one of those things that was inconsistent with Grimlock for some reason. Is it on the chest? Is it on the, on the head? It just, it is what it is. Classic color. Still probably my favorite, but I really do dig this new deco, and he of course looks a lot a lot like Trypticon. So, in my mind because like, there is no backstory to these that we can find, um, these are like if Trypticon decided to clone the Dinobots and have his own little servants, kind of. That's why they're Decepticons, not like Shattered Glass versions. And this is just a standard, uh, universal, uh, Decepticon emblem. Put it on there, sliced in half. Looks pretty clean, not gonna lie. Um, but it looks cool. Still has the same weird gappy teeth problem <laughs> that the regular one does. But I enjoyed this transformation, but I had some slight issues. Something I noticed with uh, with doing this review in general, some of these things are a little bit more difficult. And like I said before, I think, I don't know if it's just the level of paint on here, but this feels sturdier than this. And if they change materials, it would explain a lot as to why the newer set is more cost effective. I mean, they're already going with a lot less paint because a good bit of this Grimlock is painted versus this, where this has a lot more just bare plastics. So, uh, let's move on to the next Dinobot. Of course, I forgot something. So, he does come with the super smart brain helmet. Um, no chrome or anything like that. Just squeezes over the head. I kind of forgot about that. Does not come with the fish, though. I thought that was interesting. But now I'm wondering if he came with the fish, or the original one came with the fish, or if that was the McFans Toys version that did. So, But there you go. I always forget. Stupid final accessory. And next up, we'll do one of my favorites, but also one of my least favorites. He's like my favorite Dinobot, but least favorite figure. And it is their version of Snarl. And right here, you'll see why he's my least favorite. super loose joints and this is where i'll talk about how the quality seems to have really dropped here um like this joint here this pin joint is super super loose like the pin i guess is in there fine and also this purple has super bad stress marks like right through there and then even around some of the pins and then the nub marks and then like look at this even some like cut marks or something right along there it's a little bit, it's a little bit wonky. Now, the legs on uh, slag here are generally, or at least the feet slash legs, are some of the worst out of the whole set, period. Not just the normal 
or not just this one, but the normal one. If you go back and watch my review, that's a big gripe. Once again, I've added the uh, sticker here to the chest, but I like the details. I even love the purple head. And he really looks evil, looks like a Decepticon. I think it's crazy. This one, uh, because of the way the feet are designed, and then he does have this backpack, he gets a little bit, or a very big bit, back heavy, which is kind of annoying. And then because he doesn't have any kind of ankle rocker due to the way the feet work, he can't stand great. Oh, look at this. Look, look, look. As I was talking about it, the pin fell out. Look at that. There's nothing holding that pin in. That thing just dropped straight out of there. Okay, so that's going to require a tiny bit of glue to hold in place. That's for sure. Okay, so i got to be careful from now on. So, let's bring out the normal one. <clears throat> so here we go. Now I have not put any of the repro labels on him. Uh, I'm going to wait until I get another set so I can have like a G1 cartoon versus G1 toy version. And then I'm going to make all my first run ones G1 toy. Um, but once again, just looks fantastic. And something that's crazy, the lack of chrome. So, these parts are all chrome. Now, I don't know that they're die cast, but they feel cold. Like, I don't, maybe it's just the way that it's chromed out, but it feels heftier. Same thing with the frill here. Maybe it's just the chrome gives it a different feel, or maybe it is truly die cast. Kind of hard to tell. But that's a major, major difference there, you know? Uh, his big, his problem was the hips are super loose, but the toes are kind of solid. But as we go around, you can see the bigger details. Instead of painting these parts like they did on Grimlock, they just did the translucence. I don't know why they couldn't just paint them. I do like the uh, swapped out uh, purple or orange eyes versus the original blue. And raise up just a hair here. And purple horns, because anytime it's red translucent, it becomes purple translucent. And then you got the yellow swapped out for the teal, red for the orange. Looks pretty cool. And then, of course, the dullness versus that without any... Uh, metallic paint, which actually is nice because you have a lot less to scrape. He's one of the worst scraped out of my original set here because he's got like the rougher sheen and then the brighter version there. And like I said, they, they have the weapons, they're all the same, stuff like that. So there's that. Now we'll look at him in dino mode. All right, so here we have good old Tricera boy slagging his. Uh, bot mode, or sorry, dino mode, and, well, he's a potato. <laughs> this is always one of the more interesting ones because of just the high ridge back and stuff like that. Um, it is very, very scary transforming these because they are so fully painted and there are scratches everywhere. And you guys saw, I was having some issues, especially with getting the legs around these uh, shell parts were really annoying um and the fact that these are so loose doesn't help anything on this guy um i also uh currently don't know which way i want to display these guys um because they do look so good in dino mode plus now they're in dino mode i kind of want to leave them there because it's a pain in the ass once again more Trypticon color scheme not really seeing anything new except for these new forearms that were tucked away which i think is one of the more clever bits of transformation that these particular Dinobots go for, DX914, I should say, uh, with the way these tuck behind the back and stuff like that. But, once again, these plastics just feel cheaper. Something about this dark gray plastic kind of sucks. But, without the chrome on his frill there, or his shield frill, whatever you want to call it, he doesn't really stand out as much. One other thing that still bothers me to this day is that the horns can't rotate out. That they're, you know, kind of on a square peg. So they're stuck just with little pointing forwards. So, of course, uh, I think slag was always my favorite growing up because, you know, Triceratops. One thing that's also interesting, and maybe DX9 will do that, and they're probably just going to try to milk the mold as long as they can. They have not given us, like, G2 color schemes of, like, the main dinos that got those. So, you know, um, was it uh, definitely Grimlock and Slag and Snarl? All had G2 colors, because I had those um, back in the day. So, that's it for Slag. Let's move on to the next one. And because I'm kind of going in order of appearance of Dinobots, basically. There's the evil Sludge. 
very interesting looking, though he doesn't stand out nearly as much, like, because he, he's not a huge color swap difference from the normal one, um, except for the fact that the tail isn't silver and stuff like that, and the, the body being red I find interesting, like, there's, I feel like they should have gone with, uh, or rather, not being red, they should have gone with silver or something like that to make it stand out, so... Compared to the original one, who's super bold in comparison, I just don't think he his color scheme doesn't work as well. Like the black replacing the silver totally makes sense, but then you have the purple back here for the tail, which while it looks good there, doesn't make sense color scheme wide. And of course, you got kids outside screaming. Um, but they still do the silver painted toes on there. It looks pretty cool. You can see the color swap here on the feet. Not gonna lie, I dig the color scheme. There, he does have more scratch marks there, like just the way things are cut off or finished. I thought I, I saw some stress marks on him before. He does still have the same problem with hiding the head inside the leg, except I, had, up until right now, had forgotten how I fixed the that problem. So I need to redo that on him uh, where I tuck the legs up that way. So that makes way more sense, and I completely forgot about that, to be totally honest with you guys. So let me turn this head ever so slightly outward. Tuck that away. Actually, it's not even supposed to be slightly outward. It's supposed to be like way turned down like that. And then we tuck this guy up here behind the knee. And then everybody's happy. Or at least tries to be. I forgot that. I couldn't remember the, the fix. It's like I knew I did something different to make that work out better. Just couldn't remember what it was. Until I looked at him. Obviously, I haven't. I actually have not done a comparison on these until just now. So, you know, you guys. I like to show you guys real when it happens. But also, I have not done repro labels on him yet, so he doesn't have the thing. I do have them. Once again, we'll do the G1 toy aesthetic for most of them, and then I'll buy an extra set of uh, things. Uh, he also has kind of loose hips, a lot like Snarl. Um, I kind of wish that would still open, like the old school Diaclone one. I love they even left the targeting system there. I don't know if I ever pointed that out, but I don't know. Like, in comparison, I think he's the least cool adaptation, I guess, if that makes sense. I do really prefer the silver face and metallic blue eyes. This is just, I mean, it, it's neat, but it's just kind of not as cool. Just, you know, I don't know. There's something about it. Just less cool. And he was always one of my favorites because everybody loved Brontosaurus back in the day. And it's super dusty. Like, I don't know how he got more dust on him than everybody else. But let's go ahead and put him in dyno mode. Take a look at that. Okay, so that was a heck of a thing. Um, you guys saw I struggled a lot with that transformation, either doing it in the wrong order and things just getting too complicated or just trying to make sure I didn't scrape anything badly. I was having some major issues with getting the necks uh, come around there. Now that just comes down to not having transformed these guys in a while. Like I've only transformed the new set once uh, prior to this video. And then of course the old set has just been sort of left as they were since I filmed those reviews. And you know, this is a fun, fun one. I actually like this deco. Like normally I prefer the uh, Autobot version, so to speak. Uh, color wise but this one does kind of stand out to me like i know i was criticizing it in bot mode but like the big purple tail kind of stands out because i mean it is different to this one with the big silver tail that all blends in and stuff like that but um i've always had a problem with the fact that the neck can't move if the head had a hinge here um or if it just had see look they could have engineered like a, a hinge joint locked in place so the head could pivot up and down um, instead of just rotating, I mean, even a ball joint, if they put a ball joint there, it would have given you a lot more freedom to make it look good. And also like, I feel like this little bump out for the nose was never accurate to how he's supposed to look. Not to mention his face is just turned upwards. Like you can't, you can only barely move the neck down to do anything. So, uh, he was definitely the least good of the, uh, the set just because of that. And that really kind of complicated transformation. I was really super scared I was going to scratch up this area. Um, this is just not great right through here. Just this plastic is worn out and looks bad. Um, and of course, he just has the uh, not so great spray. But oh, and then I added the Decepticon logo to the top of the head. Eventually, this guy will be decoed out too. So that's cool. Let's move on 
to the next ones. And now we'll go on for Snarl, who is definitely interesting, but uh, one fatal flaw that having the clear chest on him really shows off how hollow he is because it just adds a really weird depth there. Whereas the standard one doesn't have the problem because it's a lot more smoky. You know, translucent bits here, <laughs> bright teal uh, tail there. You're definitely not going to miss it. Um, he's a pretty cool redeco, not going to lie. And I love the fact even that they gave you the translucent orange back here. So it's pretty cool. And one thing that it's weird, they give him, he and Grimlock share the same sword. But just like I did on the first one, I had to nip off the backside because it wouldn't fit in his hand. So we'll bring in the normal guy. And yeah, that's a pretty good adaptation. But the funny thing is like the metallic eyes, the metallic blue eyes look a little bit more sunk in. And then the orange eyes look a lot more bugged out. It's kind of an interesting effect there. Um, but I like... This one is a much more straight uh, adaptation of color. It makes way more sense. I mean, there's a couple spots, like right there. You know, they, they shouldn't have painted that. But I guess they left it there. So just, just a few details are different. He also has interesting legs because he has this sideways knee bend situation happening. Um, but I like him. And I will say that transforming him the clearance was a heck of a lot better than him because if you guys have watched the review also super dusty um i had to actually clearance back here so that his head could pass by it was not clearance worth the damn this one actually did it really really well and it's another thing that because this tail back here is painted versus that, which is just molded plastic, it makes a big difference in um, how you handle it. Same thing with the spikes here. So one benefit to this set is like there is paint, but it's not generally in places that you have to worry about. Um the spines here are painted on just like those are but like say his little toe pieces here are these painted i think i think these are yellow plastic and painted um so it, it's it's one benefit that this set does have as a little bit less paint where you definitely scratched it on the original set so jump over to dino mode all right now snarl is in his dino mode looks pretty neat um definitely rusty on the transformation but i knew what i was doing the biggest problem i have with this design is just the way that chest has to kind of turn into place oh something i forgot to mention in bot mode he came misassembled just like he did the legs were on backwards on the hips like uh, the hips clearly have a front and a back obviously you want the screw side facing back in bot mode it's almost exactly the same but they were both misassembled from the factory. They had to pull off the legs, turn the hips around, put the legs back on. And then it was right. I always thought that was funny that this one came that way. And then one that comes out maybe a year and a half later, maybe a little bit longer, uh, had the exact same problem. So it is a factory uh, misassembly. I'm sure a lot of people have dealt with that. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely interesting. This looks like it's probably glowing in the dark. With all this blue and stuff like that. Also, for anyone um, who might have said something, yes, I know there was like a movie shattered glass version of Grimlock. I know we're like way into the into the review now. I'll pull it up on the screen, um, and it kind of does fit that color scheme. And then there's also a deco uh, thing from the Fall of Cybertron game that you could sort of make these colors happen with uh, Dinobots and other ones like that. Um, so, I mean, maybe there's other specific references, and they just never said what exactly it is. It's just a dark dino set. Um, uh, this version of Snarl was definitely not my favorite. Something's weird about the head. It just looks a little funny for some reason. Always has. Uh, the inverted black versus uh, white here, I find that a little strange. I think that would have made more sense as silver. Um, it's not terrible, but I guess they were just trying to replicate the dull gray that the other ones have. In a few places, and that was the best way to do it, except for he's one of the few that has black kind of standing out. And I'll look at it, so I guess I just wanted to invert it somehow. 
and not have it as a heavy color. It's not bad. I just kind of wish it was uh, a different color. Also, I love the way they hide the front legs instead of tucking them in the sides like the G1 toy did. Uh, but they leave that side detail there. That's always a cool thing. Not going to lie. All right, so now Stego Boy is done. Yeah, let's move on to the final one. And last and definitely actually least, I got the Lord Swoopington. Nobody's going to remember that because nobody remembers when I reviewed him. Um, he definitely has a cool, cool thing here, but definitely looks, he looks like a seeker. Like with this color scheme on him, he actually looks like a seeker. Has anyone ever done a swoop painted up like a seeker, like a Starscream or somebody like that? I wonder if anybody ever did. But um, this one is a really massive change because he's the one who loses the most amount of chrome because of the wings. So, I mean, that's that's just a huge, huge difference. And this one would be like a really good chrome coating because, like I said, it feels like die cast. It feels heavy. These feel super light. And this part, of course, not being painted is molded in plastic, but then has the silver paint where it was gray paint over here. And then swapped red for teal and black for orange, even gold for orange. It's just crazy looking. I do love this chest, though. I think it really does pop. Um, classic swoop is just fantastic looking, so there's like almost nothing you want to do there. But something that's different on him, he's got like this gunmetal silver. Like nobody else... No, none of the other ones really even use that paint. They use either a straight silver or gray. He uses a gunmetal color. And then even like here on the feet on where it super stands out on this swoop, they're painted silver there. To me, it would have made more sense to paint these silver and leave those gray so they at least blend in. Um, I would say that normal swoop is my preferred one out of this. But as it goes, he is one of the cooler uh, design changes. Alongside, I would say, Grimlock and Slag. So let's, of course, get him to Dino Mode. Ugh. All right, now we've got Lord Swoopington done here. And he seriously does look like a uh, Seeker. Really does. It's kind of crazy. I mean, the bright orange is about the only thing that's a little bit off for that. Um, but he does look really good. I do dig it. Swoop doesn't really gain any new details, but here's the the wings now that they're unfolded. The chrome definitely has a totally, totally change, changing effect versus this. Uh, one thing that also sucks is the way they pin the head in right here. You see that? It, it does stress it out. The original one has it, but it doesn't look as bad as this does. But, I mean, with the... Septicon emblem on the head. He just looks, well, evil. I do dig him. And this is one of the easier transformations out of all of them, as you saw. It is really freaking easy. One thing that always bothers me is you can't make his toes go, like, straight back. I wish they had utilized this hole right here, like, clip that out so that the hand could fold flat. I feel like at some point that was part of the design, and then they just, you know, didn't go with it for whatever reason but you know he's got the yellow painted toes and he's just got silver toes kind of wish they had gone with orange toes would have looked pretty neat there he is kind of flying and you know i actually had to cut him down he was uh, up in my uh legend display flying above omega supreme now i'll have to figure it out so he's in uh in dino mode in the display so that means he's going to be as well i feel like at some point they just need to be opposite each other kind of in the battlefield but uh it's already a very cramped display so soon i'm going to have to revamp things because i have even more stuff coming so that's it so let's see the whole team together and there we go and this is a very good looking set now it does have some issues um Transformation and clearance issues are what they are. Uh, the pin problem on him is kind of egregious. It's like they just put the wrong kind of pins in place or something. They are, they're black pins or everybody else uses silver ones. So I feel like they probably just used the wrong type of metal pins for that. But the set is very cool. Um, I'm glad I got it. You know, it was one of the first things I bought with that silly stimulus check we got. And I, I, my job didn't 
stop happening, so that was just extra money. I had been wanting this set ever since I saw it announced, so I'm super happy to have it. Um, even though there's no direct reference to what the heck it's for, um, I definitely appreciate this cool, like, evil Dinobot set. I still love my originals. I still want to get another set so I can have one as the G1 cartoon set, which would basically be the regular ones, but without details or uh, decals. And then uh, one with all the G1 toy stickers from Repro Labels, because it's the only way they have that. But uh, if this set is for you, I definitely suggest picking it up uh, before it's gone. Um, like I said, uh, TF Source is where I picked it up. I really think that's one of the only places you can get it i mean maybe robot kingdom other places like that but i haven't really seen it anywhere else i've only really seen it there on tsr so I, I i scour a lot of different transformers platforms when i'm looking for stuff i forgot to open his mouth let's get everybody let's get everybody kind of roaring a little bit here you gotta be careful with him so he doesn't accidentally reveal his face and then grimlock is weird because it's like his jaw itself the bottom jaw doesn't move the top of the head opens up. It's kind of weird that way. There we go. It's actually hinging from the back. And once again, he always had that little notch back there, but never came with like a flame effect. I think that was, and it it's supposed to be like his flamethrower that's in his mouth, but it looks like they were meant to have a flame effect that was supposed to go in there and they never did. So, but guys, give me a big old thumbs up. Go check out the normal Dinobot reviews if you never saw those. And then of course, Go check out all of the New Age DX9 reviews if you got time. It's an ever-growing collection. And, of course, my display over there is pretty cool. Not going to lie. Uh, I do wish that it had, you know, some, uh, some more space. <laughs> but I'll catch you on the next review, guys. I know this was a long one. But I'll see you next time. Remember, as always, keep on nerding.